Hi, I'm Chris Ruff, and I'm a surface pattern designer and creator of Mockup Academy, a series of online classes where you can learn how to make digital product mockups in Photoshop. Sometimes when you bring repeat patterns into Photoshop, you'll end up with some little tiny breaks between the pattern tiles. In this video, I'm going to explain why that happens and also show you how to prevent it. So let's start an illustrator so I can show you the problem. I'm going to create a shape and fill it with a pattern that I already have in my swatch palette. Now if I zoom in here, you'll see that there aren't any hairlines or breaks in those pattern tiles. But when I copy this art with either Command or Control C, and then go into Photoshop and paste it, which is either Command or Control V, when we zoom in, you can see that those hairlines or breaks in the patterns have shown up. The good news is there's nothing wrong with your pattern. It's really just a rendering problem that Photoshop has when it's taking your vector image from Illustrator and converting it into pixels so that it can be displayed in Photoshop because Photoshop doesn't do vectors, it only knows pixels. So let me drag our pattern out of the swatch palette so we can see our pattern tile. If I go into outline mode, which is Command Y, we see all the pattern motifs in the tile, but not in the filled shape. So to keep things simple, Illustrator doesn't display the motifs in the filled shape. Instead, it creates instructions in the code to repeat this pattern tile until it fills the shape. Kind of like this. So let's do a little experiment. I'm going to copy this tile and paste it into Photoshop, where it will be translated into pixels. Now, if I copy that tile again and paste it back into Illustrator, let's compare them. This one is our Illustrator tile, and if we look at the size of it, it's 468 pixels by 216 pixels. The one that we brought back from Photoshop should be the same, but if we look at it, it's not. The height of it in this case is ever so slightly smaller. So now if I take that tile and put it back in the middle of our tiles and zoom in, you can see that there's a break. That's the problem. Sometimes when we bring filled shapes into Photoshop, it understands those instructions of how many tiles to put together and their sizes, but for some reason sometimes it makes the pattern tiles themselves too small, and that's what brings the gaps. Luckily, the fix is pretty simple. Instead of letting Photoshop do the translation of that filled shape, we'll in effect translate it before it goes into Photoshop. I'm going to copy our shape and then go up to Object, Expand. This little menu pops up. It's the fill that we want to expand. Click OK, and it doesn't look any different until I go into Outline Mode, and you can see now we see all of the motifs but we also still see those pattern tiles. So there's one more step we need to do, and that is go into Pathfinder and find the icon that says Merge. Click on that, and now Illustrator takes all those pattern tiles, merges them together, and clips them off at the edges of our shape. So now when we copy that and paste it into Photoshop, it doesn't have to do that translation of the filled shape and now we don't have any more lines. Let me walk through that one more time. So I make a shape, I fill it with the pattern, I go up to Object, Expand, Expand the Fill, and then go into Pathfinder and click Merge. And now we see all the pattern motifs, but no tile lines. So I hope this information helps, and if you're interested in learning more about making product mockups in Photoshop, I highly recommend Mockup Academy, which you can find at Skillshare.com. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, it's an online learning platform that has thousands and thousands of different topics for classes you can take, all with a single membership. And at the end of this video and in the description of this class, I'll put a special link to get two months of Skillshare for free. In Mockup Academy, we'll start with the basic concept for making a mockup, and then I'll show you how to use tools like the Distort tool and how to use the Warp tool to make your art look like it's curving around an object. I'll show you how to add highlights and shadows to your mockups so they look more realistic, 
and how to make your art blend seamlessly into a room setting like this one. Plus, each class is full of tips and tricks for using Photoshop, which makes it a great all-around course. But you don't need to take my word for it. Here's what students are saying. So I hope you'll give Mockup Academy a try, and the best news is, if you use the link shown here, which is also in the description for the class, you can watch it for free at Skillshare.com.